my name is Ebenezer Safwadu and welcome to my YouTube channel and the Eureka Business Intelligence channel. Um, I have with me here, if you watch our last video with him, Gustav Jude, he's been teaching us so much from what goes into designing reports, from themes, from colors, from contracts, from how he uses PowerPoint, from where he gets his inspiration and who and who he's learned from. He's been teaching us so much, and today we are continuing because it was just so much loaded. So, Gustav, welcome once again. Hi, Evan. All right. So, he was taking us through the call center analysis he was doing. If you've not watched it, watch the previous video, and you'll really understand what he's been teaching us. So, what do you have for us today? You can continue from where you left off the last so we actually were talking about the uh, custom theme and colors palette, um, taking into consideration the fact that uh, I'm currently uh, working on the call center analysis for DNA Enterprise. So it was an example to showcase some thought process and some practical elements of the report designs. And as we discussed in general, this particular report, I would like to show you more reports that I produced in the couple last months. So maybe I start with the challenge 14 for the DNA Enterprise. It was a emergency services analysis. Wow. So starting from the home page, it is actually this, the home page that gives you the first impression of what you are looking for and gives you the first impression that the topic that is covered in this particular report must be related with somehow with the medical um, database with medical procedures and with the emergency services analytics. And on the first page, you can see you should have some navigation elements with, of course, a PowerPoint template aggregated into the Power BI. Then some elements uh, are highlighted to make some more attractive first impressions. And of course, what is added to, the, to this report is the homepage some effects when you hover over and when you're clicking. It's a super cool feature in Power BI because you can give Power BI user the feeling that you can just navigate to another pages. So going to the summary, for example, you have a, of course, dark layouts because I decided to make that particular challenge in darkish colors. And I would like to mention that it's super cool with dark backgrounds that you can only use somehow black lines to make distinguish from one object from another. For example, if you have some visualizations like these column charts or this matrix or this bar chart, you can just add some lines which are a little bit darker when the background from these particular visualizations you make it, you make this visible structure of the report. Super important, super cool, because when an end user just exploring this report, just see exactly what do you like to present and to showcase. And you can see that you have some titles um, at the top of the report, some basic navigations, which gives you a little information about what that particular page is about. When you hover over, you can see the title of particular pages. You have the section. Gustav, mm -hmm. why did you decide to use a change of text when it's hovered rather than just probably change of color? That's a good question. I think there is no particular idea behind it. I just potentially decided just to make some words like page one, page two, page three, and to make additional informations for the end user, I just added these informations here. Probably, okay. 
if I would do this uh, particular report again, I would just make it stand out a little bit more by putting phrase here. But that was that was intentional at that moment. <laughs> I get you. All right. So here we have the KPI sections, additional buttons, which uh, gives you the access to the homepage. You can always be back to the homepage if you want. And the very important thing and very typical and well-known in the present days, like the button with clear filter. <laughs> it's very cool because if you have many categories, many filters, slicers, and date selections, sometimes end user just want to very easily uh, put the very default view of the report. So you can just click clear filters and always uh, back to the default. Go back to the page one. You did something quite remarkable with the metrics. How did you do that? It's actually the DAX. DAX is responsible in 99% for this matrix. Uh, but to be honest, when I started to thinking about this report, I just tried to make some new, make some not quite obvious. And that's why I decided to use matrix to visualize some sections, some wide ranges of times using matrix to be a little bit more stand out in terms of visualizations they use. So it's and it's part of the DAX that gives you the final, um, it only shows the the last box or the last cell yep. showcase, okay, is all part of the DAX? Of course, yes. Yes, it is. It's basically check if the value in the specific scenario is around the numbers which is in the matrix. So if yes, it gives you the gives you the number and gives you the control uh, for the color of this particular uh, shape. And if it's not in the specific uh, range of times, it stays, for example, in the same color as previous. So it's it's only like here. Wow. So it shows the ranges. Or it's just one color for each? Here is, this issue is addressing in that way that each particular time range has different colors. And it's okay. related with the colors that I use on the bar charts to have some... Correlation. Adequate correlation, yeah. So we can just, just a color distinction from different ranges. All right. Is it the same for the second um, chart on the right, the first chart on your right after the card visuals? Yeah, the upper talking, right. So you are talking about uh, yes. the yeah, time between specific medical actions. Okay. So they are compounded to the last. So this is like a stack column chart. Is that one a stack column chart? Could you say it again, Adonazor? Is it a stack column chart or stack bar chart? Oh, yeah, that's the stack bar charts. Okay. Which gives you the average times between medical actions and give you the as average total. All right. I will just have to think about it for a little while to answer the question if it's or it's not corresponded in terms of color with other visualizations. Maybe I have some ideas, but I <laughs> think about it for a second. All right. Other than here. I get you. So what are the hover clicks? You said you always look at, if I hover my mouse over, I should get something different. Can we see that here? Here, for example, you can see that actions by hovering over the buttons with homepage or yeah. the navigations. And 
and pretty much that's it. Yeah. Okay. It's more like a summary page, so there are no fancy cool tricks. Agree. Do you have any particular questions about another page? No, that's okay. okay. It's okay for the homepage. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Here are some additional functionalities like the simple button which gives you the possibility to change time frame, time perspective from monthly, meaning period, um, per period information or year to date. I, I've been seeing and um, Zebra BI teaches that a lot. Yeah, that's right. Pretty simple to implement and very effective. But I'm, this is the first time I'm seeing it being used with two different charts. Pardon? I said this is the first time I'm seeing it being used in two different charts. What do you mean, Adam Hazar, by saying two different charts? Um, two different visuals. One is a line and the other is a column oh, chart. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't understand the yeah. <laughs> another, another trick just to make information a little bit stand out because at the moment I building this report, I just feel that um, making visualizing visual visualize, visualizing visualizing some trends would be more efficient on a line charts, whereas the year to date informations would be better if we use just the uh, column charts. So I made the trick to make the switch between the monthly year to date uh, expression and it actually simultaneously changed the way it should be on stack or line chart presented. And it's probably just a combi uh, chart. This is a line and uh, a columns and in the moment you just have um, selected monthly, you just see the line and you don't see the column. And reversely, if you just pick the year to date selection, you just have blank values for the line and you're hovering the column. I get you. That's beautiful. I see a tooltip. Yep, that's right. Another cool feature in Power BI that gives you a lot of cool functionalities and possibilities because what's the, probably the most important, you can spare a very, um, very big amount of real estate on your reports by uh, implementing such tooltips. If you hover over specific points, data points, you can see additional information on tooltips, which is cool. Very cool. And I would also like to say that tooltips are great, but I also see that it could be misused because if you, for example, uh, make, make um, tooltips on every single chart that you have on a report page, and there goes also um, <laughs> these things like the storytelling, and for example, you have the report that you are presenting to the end user, to the client, Mm -hmm. Like just showcase specific APIs or a single information on the report page, and everything pops out, and every everywhere are tooltips, which makes it impression that, that you can see anything. So that's the reason that it should be used in very specific scenarios, and it not necessarily should be very big in terms of resolution um, on width and length of the particular tooltips. It should be more like a small tooltips in a very specific context. I get you. Another cool thing here on this particular pages is showing couple informations on one exemplary line charts or showing different uh, metrics. And it works in that way that you can show only averages you can see only moving average and you can see both and the average is also dynamic so you can just 
um, the size Change the moving yeah, yeah, which makes the trends looks a little bit different. Very useful. But you have a static one for 14 day moving average on the left. Why static? Because implementing so many buttons on every report makes a little bit too much noise. So I decided to make an analytical, analytical section of this particular report page here. But here is just the first glance inside and there is no dynamic. It could be, of course, but in, that, in this particular case, I decided to just not put another um, buttons and interactions between these, those uh, visualizations. Okay. Cool. We got page three, which contain a lot of different aspects, analysis, etc. Wow, what charts are you using on the right? It was a typical scatter chart or a bubble chart. Wow, and so you've done a lot of formatting like that. That's right. And it's partially determined by the database itself because on this particular challenge and uh, on in this particular information, in database, the specific metrics was very similar in structure, in structure uh, within many categories. So here's why I use many conditional formatting to just highlight specific, even small deviations and variations. Because if we just if we just use a typical uh, bar here as a conditional formatting we end up with having a flat, flat bars and it wouldn't be so visually appealing and attractive as, in, as it is in that uh, the same. verifications. I'm not saying it's the best way to visualize because it, if, if it would be the reports for the client, I would use the bars because even if they are flat and same length, it's yes. always, it will always give you some information and feedback about your, about your data, and this is not a mistake, but it should be more attractive in this particular scenario, so I decided to use uh, colors, um, background colors. Here are another cool things, which is the uh, changing colors for the markers. It's a small thing, actually. It's not fine. Are there small multiples? Could you say it again, please, Abenazer? What visual is that? That is small multiple? Yeah, uh, I'm talking about the visualization, uh, about the small multiples on the right side. All right. The cool feature is that if you have some particular periods under the averages, which could be the good way, the good information, they stay green. And if they are above, above averages, meaning that the time was too long, it's, uh, dynamically, it's dynamically formatted to be red in that case. And even if it's not in the real life um, often used, I would say that, by the way, that small multiples are an awesome way to visualize some data. Very. I really recommend this particular visualization. And we have the page four, which is quite interesting from my perspective, because it's something like the journal of specific records. And it gives you the possibility to just analyze, if you want, of course, the specific piece of information about your database. And what's more, you have that drill through, which I recommend also, drill through options that you can, for example, from specific page, you can just right click or hover over, depending on your um, options, 
you can just go drill through to the in that particular scenario to the call register and it's not seen at the first glance but these informations are exclusively yes, to the data that you can from and there is a, but like you said the challenge with drill through is that if it's not an experienced user they may never know how to use it that's right and that's a a little bit problem because it's super cool feature and it's so hidden that not always end user are aware that it is it, it, it even exists so here are also the component of the good end training and uh, training for end users and to make uh, our clients or end users more conscious that they are they they have some possibilities just to and just to use some things like drill crew. You can also have the back button, which gives you the possibility to back to the page that you came from. So it's just a matter of one click and you end up on the same page. In real life scenarios, drill through is much more effective comparing to this particular emergency services report. But as we discussed this particular report, I only mentioned that here is such feature. I think wow. that it's all about emergency unless you have another questions. Because we have the Formula One analysis, for example, which have some cool features too. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's okay for now. We can go to the Formula One. So now we have the Formula One analysis from the 15th um, installment of DNA Enterprise Challenges. And here is the home page where you can see the very general information, which are not even as much important. Here is the, the more the most important element of this report is actually the home page itself. It's the page that gives you the possibility to navigate to open the report strictly the user experience and user navigations. So I, I must say I used this inspiration in a report I built um, about some months ago. I'll share with you after we're done. Like I used this inspiration to actually build a dashboard for a competition. Um, it was a national competition. And I just wanted to add up to the buzz. So I built a dashboard trying to see the previous winners using this theme. Like really happy to hear that you <laughs> kind of interest. <laughs> Very glad. To All right. <clears throat> All right. So if we can press this button, we can activate the main sector of the reports. And the cool feature here apply is that the main the home page image is called to the background. And here is an important thing. There was a requirement from the DNA enterprise that this particular challenge has to be one pager. <laughs> of course, it seems like not be one pager because I put here six more or less pages. But on the other side, if you open the PBX file with the Formula One, you would see only one page because the whole me mechanism be standing behind these navigations is actually related and based on the one page itself. Just a matter of object grouping, hiding and unhiding specific graphics that pop out, collapse, etc. So for example, here you have the possibility to make some uh, free choices would, would you like to see? And here comes to play some kind of the storytelling because if you have the end user, you would like to lead him through the specific analysis. And you start probably with a sequence breakdown, breakdown. And actually it's very simple in terms of the use visualizations but the template and the layout itself makes the most impact if you 
if you are talking about the data visualizations. And I would only would like to highlight that the small details, small details makes difference because all the lines you can see here and all the backgrounds for the particular sections has applied different gradients. And the cool thing that we can achieve that is, of course, um, that that you can use that you can use uh, you can make that uh, reports and and um, graphics in the PowerPoint, for example, or in a different program because because you wouldn't be able to achieve the, the same result in Power BI. So here is, for example, a little bit light, uh, a little bit darker. Here is a little bit lighter, and all these small things make difference in the long the long term. For example, you have the switch between two analyses. It's a timeline, timeline analysis and geospatial, which gives you information about uh, the numbers of circuits in specific uh, world locations. And the small thing it's applied here is the little bit pop out, a little bit more bold uh, information when you hover over. And when it's clicked and you just go to the different section, to the different analysis, it's a small unitor icon, which gives you the information that you are actually on that side, on that side, that report page. The small things, but looks pretty much okay. Here's another element, for example, it's a small thing, of course, but you can have the possibility to Add, it, add to your reports many kinds of icons and graphics. And for example, here I used to, the globe icon just to make the impression that this visualization is probably correlated with some, with some kind of localization, etc. So if you just click specific region of the specific continent, you just filter the data down. So that's a donor chart with um, an icon in the middle. Yeah, that's the donor chart and just a typical icon in the middle, just like you said. All right, that's great. Wow. Here we have the back, back button and different analysis, which is based on the constructors and drivers characteristics and performance. And here, have, uh, here we have some similar uh, functionalities, but one which is a little bit stand out and is as an addition to the other pages, the slicer that enables you to filter the specific information only to the specific number of records. And for example, here you can but you can have possibility to select only, for example, five top constructors or drivers based on a specific metrics. And here are just a column with points, which are dictated uh, by which metric it will be filtered. But of course, it would be it, it can be applied to have some uh, several metrics uh, in the dynamic ways. Here you can go to drivers, you have a very similar uh, table, table and the matrix, actually, when you hover over in specific wow. uh, driver, you have additional you know, tooltip popping out, popping out with the name of the driver, with the specific years, with um, Grand Prix, and... So that's a combination of um, a matrix and a bar chart? Yeah. The column chart. Wow. Exactly. And there is this no podium number of podiums, number of wins by date. Okay. Last 14 months. Okay. Yeah, that's a various matrix put inside the one visualization. Right. I will back for a moment the circuit sec section because we have the two tips also. Here is a cool thing that we can apply in our reports also the images. And it was the um, visualizations from the marketplace actually. And it enable, uh, enables us to just insert some specific pieces. What is that trace about? 
Is it a picture with a URL? Uh, yes, that's a picture. If you are asked about this particular topic, or so please let me know if you are asking about the tooltip or not. Yeah, the tooltip. The tooltip. So the tooltip show the name of the circuits, the fastest fastest lap time, the descriptions, and the trace. And the trace is a URL. The picture in the trace. Yes. Yes. All right. The trace is actually the URL address, as you see. But I'm wondering why it's not. It's not just slow, perhaps. Slow. Probably. Because it's, lo it's loading from the website. Yes. So the add info URL, what does it do? That color. It's actually a hyperlink, which gives you the possibility to navigate to the specific site with the description. It was right. actually available as a column information in the database. So it's just give you the possibility to go to the uh, website. We and how did you get that icon there? Icon uh, about the URL yeah. address. I think it's the, it's the automatic icon which appears when you use yeah. some specific column as the URL information. All right. But it's not my choice. It's not that magic. There is a there is such icon here. All right. So we can go back. Here we have the last page, which is actually the summary of the 2021 Formula One, something like a wrap up page, which which focus more on the specific drivers and gives you the ability to just see the picture of a driver and for the car. That's great. All right. So, wow. Wow. It's also That's done. so amazing. So, this would also bring to us the end of part two of our interview. And um, I've been enjoying myself with the style due deck. Um, there will definitely be a TED because of the things he's showing us. I want us to have time and enjoy and probably practice what he's taught us. So, go style, thank you very much for the time for the part two of this. Uh, I'll be interviewing you for part three. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right. So we would meet same time. Kindly subscribe to my channel. You will be getting the notification when the third video is uploaded. Thank you very much, Gustav, and see you next time. See you next time.